Hey guys, I just want to tell you again how much I enjoy sharing the Word of God with you here on Tack Room Devotional. I'm Keith Brown. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for coming back each and every day. And, and again, it's just an honor and a privilege for me. Well, this week we're going to talk about faith again. Now, some of this you've already heard, but I, I you know, let's face it, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, it is impossible to please God without faith. So we need to know faith. We need to know how to operate in faith. So we need to talk about it and review it and go over it and over and over so we can learn to, to be the kind of, well, be people of faith. In fact, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't allow um, circumstances of life to determine what we know to be truth. And we're going to look at that this week. Um, starting with Ephesians chapter 6, it tells us, uh, in, start, and, and in verse 10, it tells us to put on the whole armor of God. And then as you read down there, after you read about the helmet of salvation and uh, the breastplate of righteousness and everything, it then says, and above all, that means it's very important, above all, take up the shield of faith. But I want to remind you that what you're putting on is the armor of God. So this shield of faith belongs to God, right? This is a God kind of faith. This isn't a man's kind of faith. So we need to learn how to operate in that kind of faith. Well, um, when we look at certain scriptures, uh, for instance, oh, let, let's go to Mark 11, chapter 11, verse 22. It says, um, uh, have faith in God. Well, when you look at the original manuscript there, you find out that it really says have God's kind of faith. It's the same thing. Above all, take up the shield of faith. That's that's God's armor. And, he, and then we're to have the God's kind of faith. That's the kind of faith we operate in, not the faith of the world. Okay? Everybody operates in faith. It's just like I've told you before. You can say, um, I'm afraid of that snake. What you're really saying is I have faith that that snake can hurt me. You see, faith works that way. That's the, that's the um, um, natural type of faith, the way we operate here on earth by our senses. But when, we're, when we understand the word of God, we say, no, I don't operate by fear. I operate by the word of God. Okay? Um, that kind of faith, the, the, where you use your senses is called um, sense knowledge faith. In other words, I got to touch it. I got to taste it. I got to feel it. I got to reason it out in my own head. We look at uh, John chapter, I think it's 20, at uh, John chapter 20, and you'll find the story in there about Thomas. Remember all the disciples had seen Jesus? Thomas shows up and they say, we've seen him. He was raised from the dead and he came and visited us. And Thomas says, I won't believe until I can put my fingers into the nail prints and I can thrust my hand into his side, right? That again is that sense, uh, a sense knowledge faith. In other words, I need to touch it. I need to reason it out. I need to see it in the natural. But you see, that's not the kind of faith that we're called to operate in. Why? Because we walk by faith and not by sight. That comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. The things of faith, remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we need to distinguish between these two kind of faiths. You, just because you say you believe something, you'll know whether you believe it or not when you listen to yourself talk. You see, if you believe it, then you're gonna, it's going to come out of your mouth. Why? Because it's in your heart. All right, so when we, we can also look at Abraham, if you look in... Um, Romans chapter 4, starting with verse 11 through verse 20, it talks about Abraham's kind of faith. Now remember, he was told that he was going to have children with Sarah, or a child, with Sarah uh, when he was 75 years old. And he said, how can this be, right? But he believed God and he continued to believe God. And, and Isaac never came around until he was 99, until uh, Abraham was 99 years old. In other words, 
Abraham never gave up on the word of God, even though it seemed like there was no way possible because he was beyond his childbearing years, and so was Sarah, he hung on to the, the word of God. He hung on to the truth. He didn't back down. Even though the circumstances said no, he hung on to it, right? That's the kind of faith we have to operate. That's the kind of faith that God wants us to know and understand. It's the kind that we don't need to... Uh, uh, our natural senses to understand, but we just believe God and believe his word. Amen. We're going to pick this up again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.